The market pops to new all-time highs but can't break out. Is there trouble ahead? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in last week's video, we talked about the fact that we were looking for the bulls to push to that 5350 area next and then pull back from there. They got close to it in the overnights and then pulled back most of the day. And now the question is, are they done pushing higher? I'll get into that in just one second. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, many of you have asked for this, so here is a big picture update to go along with our normal update. Now, let's jump into the charts and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the daily SPX chart for the S&P 500 here. And this is, again, not the futures chart because the futures just moves around too much with the contract rolls. This is more of a static, consistent uh, chart to have for the bigger picture, so I use it. So uh, add about 50 points or so to these levels so you can understand exactly where we're at on the ES if that's what you're trading. So nothing has really changed in the big picture. We're still pushing higher to all-time highs, trying to figure out these last few waves up here into the uh, 5350, 5400 area we've been talking about, looking for this throw over to complete. We had throw under down here, throw over up here, which is very common in a diagonal, which it does appear we are in. So the main counts that we're looking at are for this to be a much bigger top, where we're completing wave five of super cycle three, and in that case, we would be looking for a much bigger pullback. I think regardless of which top we get, we should see the 4,800 to 4,600 area around this level to this level of support. So you have this um, 4,750 area or so, and if you kind of draw a box here to the top of this little circle wave three, no matter what count we're in, I think we visit this 46, 4800 area regardless. Coming back and testing this high uh, makes a lot of sense. And I think we probably get a bounce there as well. Um, and then from there, we can decide exactly which count we're in to the downside. I do believe we should be topping in this bigger wave, Super Cycle 3. If that's the case, we would look for something like a 1ABC. And I do think this ABC could be quite strong. Uh, the reason being is this has taken shape in three waves. It's five waves, but the five waves are three wave structures. So what I mean by that is this wave one would typically be a five wave structure, but it's an ABC. Then you have two, and then you have ABC for three, and then you have four, and then you have an ABC for five here. And you're getting a blow off top as well. So the main count or the primary count until proven otherwise would be that we are trying to top in this wave five of a super cycle three. And this is basically since the inception of the market, this would be the super cycle three. We'd be looking at a super cycle four to start. And we'll get more in depth on that if and when that starts to play out. But it's just something to prepare for. I think you should be prepared for a pullback into the 46, 4800 area first. And then from there, we'll kind of see what we get. We always should be prepared for risk. And when the market has made this kind of move, you should have been positioned well enough in your 401ks, in your normal buy and hold accounts, to have made quite a bit of profit here. So you should start scaling some down, looking for the minimum of this 46 uh, to 4,800 area to be able to start to maybe layer some back in if we see the right kind of setup. So that would be the main count here is that we get this First pullback or initial pullback into 46, 4800, a bounce, and then down. And I think this entire move could be pretty quick, um, quicker than people think because of this nature of this being a very large ending diagonal. And diagonals usually trace back to their origination points pretty quickly. So we would look for this to be a pretty strong move down should that occur. Now, the alt count, okay, could be that we're still in wave three of this move up. So in that case, all right, we would be looking at this still as a diagonal. It's still going to be a three-wave structure everywhere you look. But you would have wave one here, and then wave two, and then you would have A, B, C for three. Then you'd look for four, and four could be a pretty decent wave, but I think 46, 4800 where is where we should be holding on that. We come back in four, and then we have one more high in five that could take us up towards 5,800, maybe even 6,000 and a blow off top. But that would be the alternate bullish count where 
We still need a pullback. We're still looking at this 46 to 4,800 area. We're still looking at a pretty quick, uh, swift move down. Uh, and then we look higher to the upside. Now, one of the reasons I don't necessarily think this is playing out is the NASDAQ, and we'll look at that here shortly. Um, you're getting a blow off top here, which you would expect for a wave three of this size. You've blown way through the trend line up into the upper end of the area. You've given yourself a nice all-time high here of about 600 points from the last one and a pretty straight up move. So the blow off top isn't just the top. The blow off top is the whole move and the whole move has been very straight, very vertical. So it's very hard to find moves like this in the market. You can see there's very little pullback in any area. If you look over here, this is a nice move up, a very strong move up on this side of the chart, but all the way up you have pullback, pullback, pullback. You don't have any of these kind of pullbacks on the other side here. This is a very strong blow off top move or type of move. And so um, when we look at NASDAQ, that is one of the reasons I think this will be the end. But we do need to keep in our back pocket that they can hold this 46 to 4,800 area and a pullback and make one more high towards 5,800 like this before we see a bigger correction ensue. So just going to depend on what happens when we pull back into this area. And I do say when because that will... I very confident that we will pull back into this 4,600 to 4,800 area, and then we'll see what happens from there. So that's the bigger picture on the S&P. Let's drill down and look at the hourly chart. Now, diagonal structures are incredibly overlapping. As you can see here, you get a move up, move down, a move up, a move down that overlaps, move up, a move down that overlaps, a move up, a move down, move up, move down. So they are incredibly overlapping, which makes them a little more difficult to track. The weakness today is interesting. They hit the 161817864 uh, area almost to the penny. They spiked through it just a little bit, almost up to the 2.0 of what they're looking for for this wave five, this bracketed wave five. And so that is a common target for a ending diagonal to hit. So if this wave five, obviously it's very overlapping. You can see this here. If they're going to push this up one more time, we would look at the 5357 area, 5337 to 57 area as our next target, and then look for it to turn down from there. They can, of course, extend a little bit to 5390 to 5400. I don't think that's going to be the case based on the structure of this last push and some other things we're seeing that I talk about in my room. But they can push this up. I would be my next target is 5357 to the upside, and then we'd look for it to start to weaken and roll over at that point. Now you did get some good selling here today and when a diagonal ends you do want to look for straight down selling which we got and they got it into the first support area. So what I talked about in my room today is when you get to first support this is a FOMO buy the dip area right. So everybody who wants to buy the dip buys where they can see support they want to buy. So the first support area off of an ending diagonal is always a little bit uh, tough to get through like a normal support area would be where they grind you know they kind of push down bounce off of it grind around and then break through now they have not broken through yet and they may not break through so far it has not been the type of selling you want to really see but if they decide to gap down and go and break this way for low at about 5270 here 5260 that would be a first warning for the bulls and that could accelerate the selling because now you're by the dippers have broken upper support and they're most likely going to wait for lower support down here around this B wave at 5168 or so. So you're going to see uh, a chance at really rapid selling. And if it's going to be the end of the diagonal, you'd really want to see this kind of selling from through most of this rest of this support. So upper support usually provides a little bit of resistance. You break through, you get to the next support level and it doesn't even acknowledge it because the selling has begun and people are starting to head for the exits. So until you see that, that would be your cue that we may be coming down to test this blue box and break it. Until you see that kind of selling, you can still have a bullish bias here. And as long as we're above this blue box, we're in a bull market. This is a bull market, and you should respect that. So a break of this low should accelerate selling. And then if they can continue to sell and kind of ignore these support levels that you see here, they're going to stop a little bit. They're never just going to go straight line, but they might just you know kind of one jab and go instead of sitting there all day like this and then finally getting through or, and then reversing it. So there's a big difference in how the market approaches support or resistance and whether it's going to break through or not. And when you're looking for the end of a diagonal, you're looking for straight down waterfall type selling. First level of support can be a little bit 
um, strong. And you can even get a little bit of a bounce before you see the, the waterfall really take effect. But in general, you want to see very strong selling to give you an idea that we're starting to move down. And then on top of that, you just need to break key levels, right? So the next key level, if they can break this wave four low here at 52.60, and really this 52.70 area would be the first warning shot because that would be the wave two low. Breaking that kind of ends this uptrend. So 52.70 is your first key level. This B wave low at 51.68, and then the blue box below the blue box is a major warning to the bulls over on the NASDAQ. Okay, so on the NASDAQ bigger picture daily chart here, we are on the NQ futures. It's a little bit different than the ES, and the reason for that is, is after you got this leading diagonal for wave one, and then you got wave two, wave three was an impulsive wave. It hit the targets, it blew through um, the upper resistance and extended, which you would expect in this kind of move. It hit the 1764, then it pulled back and held the pivot, which is what it's supposed to do. And then it blew through the 2.0, which when you hit the 1764 is expected. It's up at that 18,544 area. The next levels are 18,800 to 19,129. And so these areas are measurable and usually pretty accurate to tell us a fifth wave is here. And this is what we would expect from a fifth wave in an impulsive move. So when you're in diagonals and you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to understand what's at the A, B, and C of it, it can be a little bit confusing because of all the overlap. But when you have an impulsive move and they hit the targets, this looks like a pretty complete five-wave structure with a blow-off top in wave five, which is what you would expect to give them a new high. And yes, they can push it a little bit higher, like I said, up toward that 19,129 would be about where I would expect it to turn over. But I do suspect that the NASDAQ is in its wave five which would mean it's in store for a bigger pullback and then down. Now, is it possible that NASDAQ makes its pullback and then rallies and ES leads that rally and ES goes and makes another high for its wave five while ES or while NASDAQ rather makes a wave B? Yes, that is possible. So it is possible for the NASDAQ to be in a different count than the ES where the ES hasn't quite topped and NASDAQ does. As we've seen in the past, in January of 22, NASDAQ topped first. Here, NASDAQ topped first. So NASDAQ tops first quite often. So it is possible that NASDAQ is reaching its ultimate top. We get a bigger pullback, and then ES needs to go make one more high while NASDAQ makes its B wave high, and then we see them both roll over in the next move down. Again, we'll have to see what kind of structures we get, what kind of pullback we get, if we hold support or not. All of those things are to be determined, but I do suspect a sizable pullback in the NASDAQ. And when it tops, I would suspect that it's a high and not a wave three. I would suspect it's in wave five of five, and you would see the pullback play out. Potentially in a move like this, where you get your first move back down toward the 15,000 level, you get a head and shoulders type pattern here, and then kind of the sell off to the other side of that mountain. So that's what we would look for on the NASDAQ in the bigger picture. They can continue to push higher. Again, the next higher target would be the 19. Uh, I'm sorry, 18,806 and then 19,129 areas. Drilling down on the NASDAQ. Now on the NASDAQ, I talked to my room about this. The NASDAQ has obviously been weaker. They made this high back here on the 21st and have not made a new high since, whereas ES has made a couple new highs. And NASDAQ held its resistance area. We talked about this 18,6 area being very strong where ES might need to make a new high and NASDAQ would hold this area. That's exactly what happened. But still in the bigger picture, NASDAQ is still above support. NASDAQ is still consolidating here. NASDAQ has not broken down yet. That doesn't mean it can't or won't. It means that it hasn't yet. So if you look at the bigger picture, we're on the one hour chart here. We're just consolidating sideways in this range right here. Okay. Off of this peak, you had a failure at this level here that was really strong. You came back up and you made a high and you basically failed the same level because you poked through and came back down. But this failure was not as strong as this failure, right? They came back up, made another new high just over this one, spiked through and failed the same basic area. And this failure was even weaker than this failure, meaning it didn't fail as deep. And what that tells you is potentially the bulls are buying these dips and the bears are weakening up here. They're not as able to sell it down as far as they were before. They're not able to gain seller's momentum and break through these levels. And instead, the you're getting higher lows. And you're consolidating in this range here. So the range comes back to these two peaks and then these valleys that they've been at. And you kind of have this pattern building here where you have this low, another low, lower low, 
a shoulder, a right shoulder, and then an explosion up out of that into the head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders pattern for this wave four. So you have A, B, C down for four, and then you have one, two, and you're looking for the conclusion of this up around that 19,000 area we talked about. So you do have the potential here for an inverted head and shoulders to play out if they can hold this left shoulder and ultimately this wave four low, we would look for that. And then a breakout to the upside on the NASDAQ up toward that 19,000 level. Now, it has been weak, but if the bears cannot get down and break yesterday's low as well as this wave four low around that 18,383 level that we've been talking about as support that was so important, if they cannot break that, then you have a pretty strong setup for a breakout pattern to the upside toward that 19,000 region overall. So if they can break down, you'd be looking for them to come down and break that level and then that 18.2 area, and then ultimately the blue box for it to be bearish. But right now, until they do that, this is a bull market, and as long as they're above this wave four low right here, they are set up for a breakout towards 19,000 uh, in a wave five, of that bigger wave five to complete that move. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It'll take you right over to the webpage. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans and they both come with a seven day free trial. And this is because I want you to get in there. I want you to become part of our team, interact with PT and I, get in the group, see how it is, see how friendly it is, how fun it is how much it's a big giant family in there. We have a great time trading and we'd love to have you in there. You can cancel at any time. You literally have nothing to lose just by coming to check it out. We also have our education courses available. We are just about done with our Elliott Wave course. I added four new videos over the weekend. I just have a few more to do and it will be done. In this course, you get all of these advanced concepts that we're talking about, like triangles, like diagonals, like double and triple threes, flats, everything that you can Imagine that the market can do. Elliott Wave has a pattern for, and these are the advanced ones. So you can see on the screen that people are really loving it because it's helping them understand these really complex patterns and understand how to trade it as well. So we also go over trading down here where we go over setups, risk reward, 401k, hedging, all that kind of stuff so you can understand how to use Elliott Wave in that way. Now, if this is too advanced for you or you're just getting started with Elliott Wave, we do have our Elliott Wave for Beginners Online course. In there, we're helping real traders make real money by finally understanding the market in a way that makes sense. It can be very confusing when good news makes the market go down and bad news makes the market go up. And this is because Elliot knew that the news didn't mean anything, but key levels did. He was able to find these key levels and he understood what happened when they held and when they failed. And this gives you a huge advantage over the rest of the market. This course is 25 videos where I go over three different parts, your introduction, where we go over your mindset, the KISS method and why it works, your chart setup and tools, where we go through every tool you need to use with Elliott Wave and why, as well as the Elliott Wave for beginners area, where I go through each of the waves, how to measure them, how to get the key levels, how to understand when they are succeeding, when they fail, what happens when those key levels work or don't work, all of the different things that you make it so you can understand the market in a way that makes sense. The very cool part about this, in my opinion, is if you don't wanna pay for either of these courses, you can get them for free simply by becoming a monthly member. They come with your membership. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where we go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ and we swing in day trade, so we do trade quite often in my room. But if you're looking for futures trading, individual stocks, income trading, and advanced training, you need to check out PT's throne room in there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as individual stocks, futures trading, income trading, which is just killing it, guys. He had another successful month last month. Absolutely killed it. I'll post those results tomorrow. And his reduced risk binary method that absolutely crushes the market. He gets you in at a cheap price and gets you big multiples on your money. And that's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial so you can see those types of trades. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. All right, the key takeaways for today, bulls need to hold over this 40 or 5270 area on the ES and ultimately this way for low at around 5263. Assuming they can do that, they still have a path higher toward that 5337 to 57 area. Over on the NASDAQ, they are consolidating here. It is weaker. The bulls have been lackluster lately, 
but assuming they can hold this right shoulder low and break out, we do have a potential for this diagonal to break out up toward the 19,000 area to complete this wave five. And they would need to hold that 14.8383 area as support, this wave four low. If they break below that or below the blue box, we are seeing a major warning to the bulls. Guys, that's your market update for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow.